Hi guys, this is Mr. Adams from High School, and today we're going to look at percent error. We were tackling percent error at the end of the last class, but I'm going to give you a bit of a refresher in case you quite didn't quite understand it. No problem. Now, percent error has a formula that goes with it. It's found on your reference tables, table T, so you don't have to hurt your heads memorizing it, okay? So, it's going to be percent error is equal to the measured value, okay, minus the accepted value, Okay, over the accepted value again, times 100. Now, what's the purpose of the percent error? It's helping us determine how accurate we were in relation to an experiment, right? Now, remember we talked about accuracy being how close you are to the true, to the accepted, or the actual value, right? So, that's what the percent error helps us with. Okay, so let's go over here. So, let's say we have a problem, right? student, okay, calculates the density of iron to be 6.80 grams per centimeter cube. Now, you don't move on from there. You take a breath. You ask yourself, since the student is doing experiments, right, that's called the either the experimental value or the measured value, the one that the student measured, okay? So, measured or experimental value, okay? All right, no problem. So, you know for a fact that this is your MV, your measured value and you continue reading okay now a handbook now this handbook right has going to be have what in it it's going to have the actual value in it now sometimes the in the handbook um you know the, the professor gives you the handbook information or a teacher gives you handbook information or get it from the internet or whatever but the real value okay is normally unknown to you when you're doing an experiment especially in college for your grade okay you don't know it um beforehand okay so a handbook reveals that the correct value is 7.86 grams per centimeter cube. So, what's the situation? Student does the experiment. They find the density of iron to be 6.80. Okay, the professor looks in the handbook, or the student goes afterwards and looks in the handbook after they handed their lab in. It's 7.86, okay, grams per centimeter cube. So, what's going to happen is they're going to use this formula, right, to now figure out how their accuracy holds up in terms of a percentage, right? So looking at our reference tables, we have it here already, MV is a measured value. So measured value is what? Is 6.80. So you're going to write that down, people. Okay, you're gonna write on 6.80. Okay, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna subtract from that, okay, 7.86. And divide again by 7.86. And you're going to times that by 100. And you're going to take a breath. So here's a funny thing, guys. Normally, right, if you notice, like, this is a smaller number. This is a larger number. Normally, right, this percent error um, formula has absolute values, right, which makes the answer always positive. So we're going to imagine that we have absolute values there. So when you get your calculation done, I did it already, and I got something around 13.5%, okay? So if you get around 13.5%, you're on the right track. The only thing is to worry about in this problem, guys, is figuring out who did the experiment. That's your experimental or measured value, and what the accepted actual or true value is, and that's it. So it's not really a hard um, problem, folks. Um, you got this, no problem. So, um, you know, you can look up problems on the internet and maybe, you know, practice one for yourself. Okay, so no problem. So as always, guys, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. I'll see you guys in class soon. Be safe. Take care.